In this part 4 video of assembly via Arduino, the built-in analog to digital converter within the UNO is programmed using assembly to digitize analog input voltage and then display the result on LEDs connected to digital ports. The 80 mega analog to digital converter is a 10-bit successive approximation ADC which has 8 multiplex analog input channels. The converted 10-bit data is held by two special function registers, ADCL which stores the low byte result and ADCH which stores the high byte result. Three options for V-reference, we can either have analog VCC or internal 2.5 volt reference or using the analog reference pin. We have four special function registers associated with the ADC. We have ADCL, which is the data register that stores the low byte of the result. ADCH, which is the data register that stores the high byte of the result. We have ADCSRA, which is the control and status register, and ADCMUX, which is the multiplexer select register. Let's have a close look at the AD multiplexer register. These two bits are the reference selection bits and they determine the type of uh, voltage reference used by the ATD converter. So a value of 0, 0 means we are using the external pin analog reference. 0, 1 means we are using the analog VCC pin which is the same as VCC. 1, 0 is not used and 1, 1 means we are using the internal 2.56 volt reference and in this video we'll be focusing on the internal reference. When using the internal 2.56 volt V reference it is highly recommended to connect a 100 nanofarad capacitor between the analog reference pin and ground. This will increase the precision and the stability of the ATD converter. This bit here is the ADC left adjust result. A value of 1 means that the 10 bit result will be left justified inside the 16-bit register while a value of 0 means the result will be right justified and these uh, 5 bits here from MUX0 to MUX4 they will determine which analog channel will be selected starting from channel 0, ADC0 to ADC7 and this is the truth table for the selection. If we set this bit here then the 10-bit result will be copied into the 16-bit register made of the ADC high and ADC low in a left justified manner. When the value is 0 then the storage will be in a right justified manner. As an example when we copy this byte into the ATD multiplexer register we are choosing internal 2.56 V reference right justification an ADC0 channel. To access this uh, register and other ATD converter special function registers we need to use instruction STS which stands for Store Direct to SRAM. The reason for this is that all of the special function registers related to the ATD converter are memory mapped within the static RAM part of the memory. This is the AD control and status register this bit here will enable the ATD converter. This bit here will start the conversion. This bit here is the auto trigger enable and it will not be used in this video so it is assumed zero. This bit here is the interrupt flag and it will be set when the conversion is done. This bit here is the interrupt enable bit and if set it means that the conversion will start based on an external interrupt and in this video we'll not be using it so it will be assumed zero. These three bits here are the prescaler select bits and they determine the clock frequency of the ATD converter and therefore the conversion speed. So based on this truth table a value of 001 will give us a clock frequency of half of the system clock while a value of 111 will give us an ADC clock frequency of clock divided by 128. Now this would give us, this value here would give us the slowest uh, conversion speed but it will guarantee us the maximum accuracy. 
As an example, if we copy this byte into the AD control and status register, then we are enabling the ATD converter and we are selecting this uh, clock frequency for the ATD converter to give us the maximum accuracy. And again, note here that we are using instruction STS in order to store a byte into this uh, special function register of the ATD converter. This is a flowchart showing you the steps needed to program the ATD converter. First, we need to set one of the pins of port C for input to be used as an analog input. And then we need to program register ATD multiplexer to determine the type of V reference, the type of justification, and which analog channel. And then we program the ATD control and status register to enable the ATD converter and to select the conversion speed. Then we start the conversion. And then we check the status of the interrupt flag. When the conversion is done, then we read the low byte result, which is stored in data register low. And then we read the high byte result, which is stored in data register high. It's very important that we read the low first and then the high. And then we start another conversion and the process continues. A circuit diagram of the implemented system is shown here. We have a 10K pot connected to pin PC0 of port C. We have eight red LEDs connected to eight digital pins of port D. We have two blue LEDs connected to two digital pins of port B. An important note here, before you upload the sketch onto the UNO, you have to remove the two LEDs connected to pins RX and TX because these two pins will be used when the sketch is uploaded onto the UNO. Once the sketch is successfully uploaded, then you can reconnect these two LEDs. And now for a quick demonstration. Note that the low byte results is displayed on red LEDs connected to port D. And the two bits of the high byte are displayed on two blue LEDs connected to pins of port B. A quick look at the sketch used in the project. We have within the INO file the C part of the code, which calls two function. This function within the setup initializes the ATD converter. And this function within the loop will read the 10-bit uh, result from the ATD converter and display it on the ports. Inside the setup function, this function is called and we jump to the S file and go to label initialize ADC. And here we set port D as output to receive the low byte result of the ATD converter and set port B as output to receive the high byte result and we set pin PC0 as input for the channel ADC0. And then we program the uh, register AD uh, multiplexer with this uh, byte value so that we have internal 2.56 reference voltage, write justification of data, and channel ADC 0. And then we program the uh, register ADC uh, control and uh, status with this byte so that we enable the ATD converter and we choose a prescalar value of clock 1 over 28. And then we return to the uh, setup function and Keep in mind that this uh, part of the subroutine is executed only once. Back inside the C function and within the loop function, we call this function and we jump to the S file again and go to label read ADC. And here we program the AD control and status register with this byte so that we start the conversion. During the ATD conversion process, we want to check the status of the intra flag to see whether the conversion is done. And to do this, we need to uh, store the byte in register AD control status register into this R21 register. And then using this instruction, which is uh, skip if bit in register is set to see whether the intra flag is set or not. Now, if the flag is not set, it means the conversion is still ongoing, then 
this instruction will be ignored and the next instruction will be executed which is a jump instruction to label weight ADC and we have a loop here that will continue until the conversion is done and the intra flag will be set so this instruction will be executed and the jump instruction or the next instruction will be skipped and the program will go to this next instruction after the conversion is done we program the ADC control and status register with this byte so that we set the intra flag again so that the microcontroller can clear the intra flag and the ADC will be ready for another conversion next we get the low byte result from register ADCL and copy it into R18 and then get the high byte result in register ADCH and copy it into R19 and then output the low byte result to port D and output the high byte result to port B and then return to the calling function which is the loop function and the process is repeated indefinitely. In a future video the potentiometer will be replaced with an analog temperature sensor and the digitized readings will be displayed on LCD screen.